as you can see today's session basically to give you an out an outlook an approach on how you can plan your next 100 days if you haven't spent the last 100 days properly the next 100 days actually doesn't matter at all but still with the assumption that you have spent the last 100 days properly let me give you an idea of what you can do for the next 100 days right so as i can see here we also have students from who are not enrolled with us as well so may i know if there are people here who already have prior experience with prelims prior prelims yes all right okay and online as well so good evening to online students so you can for online students if you have any doubts you can you can text to my id okay i am i have logged in as satya krishnan please don't send it to the administrator uh, so you can send it to me so we have different groups of students here the group we have people who have already given prelims who would have already cleared prelims because people clear two prelims and fail in the third prelims as well are you aware of that it happens people clear this exam and fail in the next prelim prelims as well it happens as well because of csat right so we do have a mixed group of audience here so what i'll do is i'll first address something that's common a common priority for everybody which is actually the csat paper right and then i'll go into the general studies paper okay because year after year in csat i do find students who actually cross 120 in gs but failing to make it through prelims only because of csat and they all and it also includes students from really good engineering colleges as well who are good at mathematics even they fail to cross 66.6 marks okay at the same time we have also students from completely humanities background who actually make it through make it through csat okay so it's kind of becoming more paradoxic so let me try to attempt to explain why this problem happens and what you can actually do to avoid this problem and you can comfortably sail through csat paper so i believe you have already started giving csat tests right and you will be judging yourself you will be knowing where you stand strong and which are the areas which are constantly pulling you down by now you would started having got uh, getting an exposure to exposure to that right so do you actually have a strategy hmm? if without a strategy most probably you might pick, even fail in csat paper okay that's the truth you will soon realize it if you don't have a strategy so better you have a strategy so can i get some plan of action what is that you have in your mind for the upcoming csat paper how do you plan to take it forward do you have you identified areas where you actually have a tendency to score more do you have such a plan as such it's very low or for others what about others is my voice loud and clear or is it very feeble for those who are joined online voice is loud and clear okay all right so i guess it's all fine at my end if something is an issue please check at your side as well okay so yeah yourself ah, tell me what is your plan okay okay what else is left out we have said everything reading comprehension quants logical reasoning Hmm? Okay. Have you analyzed previous year's question paper? Started to analyze. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's what you're taught. Forget about reading comprehension. Focus on maths. You will clear this exam. <laughs> Then. What are the parts will go away? Keep solving it. Solving it. You'll get stuck. Keep on getting stuck. One of the parts is gone. Now you approach reading comprehension. Okay. Ten questions you'll attend. Eight will go wrong <laughs> because you are working in the crunch of time. Okay, that's where you don't have a strategy. First solve maths and then come to reading comprehension. You should not do that. Okay, let me tell you, UPSC wants people who can actually read well because the nature of the job that you are going to do involves a lot of reading. So it will make sure it will eliminate people who try shortcuts to avoid reading comprehension. Okay, so never try to outsmart UPSC with such kind of strategies. Yes, it may work. i'm not saying it will not work it will work for somebody who's super good in mathematics okay but if you are not so good 
if you have not been a 99 percentile guy in cat exams and all then you better forget about all those strategies okay most probably you basically can just make a small twist in the math question and it can make it tremendously tough for you to deconstruct the problem okay so uh, don't have such a kind of a, a template approaches because somebody has told you the reason why people tell you that focus on max and forget about reading comprehension is because that is something that cannot be taught in a class so they have to justify their existence and so they naturally tend to say that focus on max reading comprehension let leave it because you cannot get it exactly right who said so no you can actually get it exactly right you read it properly if you know how to read editorials properly you will actually get the tone of the passage correct okay so the first advice that i would give you with csat is never tend to have some kind of a indoctrinated shortcut approach thinking that that will help you clear this examination it's not going to work number one be an all rounder be well rounded in both reading comprehension as well as in every other area okay you need to be you need to be aware of every area some areas you can be very strong some areas you can be less strong at okay for example permutation and combination you can if i i, I always feel that I, i'm not so good in that permutation and combination you know but for somebody that could be a strong area whereas you may be weak in probability right so everybody has a differential areas where we are comfortable with but uh, don't tend to ignore an area completely and think that without being proficient in that i can still make it through no it's not going to happen okay I, and i'll tell you maths question last year's csat paper actually reading comprehension was not that difficult okay the year before that rc was actually quite tough passages were very abstract arriving at the right inference from a very abstract philosophical idea becomes difficult but last year csat paper is every question is every passage is quite straight forward these are not abstract ideas okay so when, when you may focus on mathematics completely because you have trained yourself in all your test series that you'll keep on focusing on maths question maths question in all the test series we are able to get 85 90 same practice you take it to upsc hall you will end up failing there okay so don't have such approaches you experiment and find it out what actually works okay so let me give you an approach first with csat in csat for those with humanities background if you are really scared of mathematics and all let me bust the fear by showing to you there are 20 questions in mathematics which are very simple you don't really need to work out extensively and all because i have seen some csat classes and csat questions and all which involves lot of factorial and all those problem solving skills which actually are not needed to clear upsc csat paper okay here without knowledge of any formula you can still clear it comfortably with a safe margin i'll show you how it is done out of 80 questions in csat i have found out from the last year's papers analysis i'll show you what those questions are as well at least there are 20 math questions which are so simple you only need to have that spark in you to break down okay if you can do that you get the answer right you don't really have to have complex mathematical formula uh, summation n factorial series converging series diverging series and all those things don't need it at all okay provided if you can get those 20 questions right you already have 50 marks in csat paper and from 24 passages passage questions you only need to get 16 more marks so even if you attend 10, 10 passage you get 6 or 7 right right you get 6 or 7 right you get 4 wrong you can still clear it and with 20 e easy math questions okay so csat is actually not a difficult paper at all okay let's see how it is so this is my break up so yesterday night i was just working through last year's paper finding out what kind of questions they are what kind of skills it involves to solve them 44 questions are i mean okay leave 24 is from reading comprehension which i feel all 24 are easy only even leaving aside the 24 questions coming to the these 20 questions okay from all these different areas so this is the break up we'll see the questions where you don't actually need great mathematical skills as such you just need to be cool at that moment okay you have to apply logic or at least you draw a diagram and you work out you will get the answer right okay, okay. these are as simple questions as that the remaining questions let's leave it it of course involves some good mathematical skills and all that okay so when we already have question so the point in the exam you are going to write this year is you should be able to differentiate between questions which are difficult and easy not knowing that this is an easy this is a difficult question you end up thinking 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 3 4 minutes goes away 
you should be cautious that this should not happen in the exam and that's why you have to practice through tests the skill of identifying which are the difficult ones which you are not supposed to even touch in the exams to hone up those skills that's why you need to write a lot of tests it's not to finish a test learn that formula mug up that formula thinking that the same kind of problem if it is given you will be able to use that formula no the problem may be differently worded you may not even realize that it is this formula which will have to be used in this particular problem upsc is capable of doing such wording of the questions okay so it's not through memorizing formula you're going to crack this paper okay but it is to through identifying that there are so many simple questions so let's say total 80 questions 24 44 you still have another 36 questions right 36 questions may be of the difficult moderate to difficult remaining 20 questions are simple questions so basically if you every third question you come across you should be able to solve it or what i'm trying to say is even if you leave two questions continuously you should not feel threatened you should not feel scared that oh my god i'm leaving two questions no the third question is all that you need to solve max right approximately so you should actually be in a position where you maintain your cool even after leaving out two questions not even knowing how to break that it's okay there is a third question where you will be able to get the answer right you only need 20 questions all together to really score well in mathematics 20 to 2.5 is 50 marks right another 15 more marks after all that is needed can you not get it from reading from range you can so don't worry about the remaining 36 questions okay but if you go with the mindset that i have been told that max is everything rc is something that i have been trained to leave it so let me focus on max let me focus on max when you go with that mindset what you do is you even start focusing on these questions also unnecessary right so that's why my first idea that i will give you is the examination hall it's okay to start with mathematics first but make sure after one hour immediately you start doing reading comprehension don't keep on doing till the last mathematic problem and then think that you'll come to the reading comprehension part not more than one hour and i'm very sure after seeing these questions within one hour easily you can finish these 20 marks 20 questions 50 marks you can guarantee in the first one hour if you know which questions as soon as you see you better leave it and go away all right for example in the same sequence based questions there are these three types of questions which are asked okay last year's questions i used to actually feel very good about myself when it comes to solving these sequence and all puzzles but last year's question when i saw that i'm actually not, still not able to find out what is the logic in this okay not able to figure figure out maybe you may be able to figure it out but what i would do is i would forget this question instead of only focus on this question so what i'll do is this question says arrange alphabets in the reverse order okay so write a b c d e f g h till z write it reverse again now l see where which alphabet corresponds to and when you do like that you get the answer right it will actually take you not more than 2 minutes to do when you have this why worry about right so you should be smart enough to pick up pick this question instead of focusing on this even i would have i, I think i would have really spent around 40 50 seconds with this question before i arrived at a conclusion that okay let me leave it and move on that is the difference whether you spend 40 seconds on it or whether you are sp spending 4 minutes on it because in all through your tests you have been trained that all sequence questions you have been getting it right so your mind automatically your con your subconscious believes that it is this area which is your scoring area okay so be flexible right don't be rigid that this is what you are no right you will get more op opportunities so be open to that similarly here in the series a a b a b c just look at that which letter appears at the 100th place anybody can you tell me this okay one of you has answered it as h i don't know but okay can you please type the logic how did you figure it out as h is there any sequence here okay a a b a b c a a b a b c a b c d a b c d e okay this is the logic somebody has figured it out right okay 
So, okay, then how does it happen to be? H happens to be the in the hundredth position. Maybe th there could be some kind of a mathematical reasoning here, right? Some kind of series or some some principle should be there. Okay, but can I can you understand what I'm trying to point out? Yes, somebody is able to do that, but not everybody might be able to do that. But even if you're not able to do that, don't even have slightest worry about it because this is not among the 20 questions. Okay. This is among the 20 questions. We have 20 questions which are just so simple as this. So you should just be cautious that you don't end up wasting your time in these kind of questions. If you are good at it, fine. You can, yes, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Okay. So there is somebody who some kind of a, a mathematical principle, right? So did, it, did you know that, know the principle of that series, summation and all that? No. It's okay. No problem. So this is, there are two questions like this, which are among those 20 questions, easy questions, not so difficult. Okay. Similarly, statement sufficiency. This is the area which you actually have to be strong. Okay. Because. This is an area where you don't really need so many mathematical skills and all, but you only need to find out if the data that is given alone is sufficient enough to arrive at a conclusion or not. Okay, this is actually a very good scoring area. All questions with the same mindset you can approach. For example, you consider this question. Consider the question and two statements given below. The statements are these. X is a brother of Y. Y is a brother of Z. Statement two, X, Y, Z are siblings. Is Z a brother of X? Okay. And first statement alone is sufficient to answer. Second statement alone is sufficient to answer. Both are sufficient. It's not, it's insufficient. Hmm? What is the answer? Answer is D. Why so? Sister also. Right. So simple, no? Right. So this is how this, these questions happen to be. All data sufficiency questions, if you can figure it out for this, you will be able to figure out for other ones. Right. So data sufficiency, you can actually bank upon it heavily. It will come to your help in the day of the exam. Right. So this is a, this could be a strong area like that. You have all these areas where you have simple questions. Okay. So, and when you see such kind of big questions, no, don't get scared. Actually, this is a scary question then because everything is clearly given here. You just need to write down things. And when you start doing it, you will actually get the answer easily. Right? With each and every full stop, with every, each and every sentence, you will get one one hint. By the time you go through all the six sentences, six or seven sentences, you actually end up getting the answer. answer. So you should not immediately get look at the size of the question and feel scared and you feel that, okay, let me leave it. I'll move to simple ones. Simple ones are more tricky. Okay. You should actually, this is easy. It's not so difficult because it says that it has a number A, B, C, D, F, G, not necessarily in the order where each letter represents a distinct digit. Okay. Number is divisible by nine. So it means G should be either nine or one, right? Like that you use each of the number properties. Okay. You take out this one number, the resulting number is divisible by six. If it is to be divided by six, it should be either a multiple of two or eight. Correct. Like that, when you start using the property of number, one of the number, you will find that it is, it's a divisible by five, which means that that number is only five, nothing else, right? Like that, you can actually get this answer right. It will take you one, one and a half minutes to get this answer right. Okay. So I don't, I don't want to discuss too much about CSAT as such, but what I just, I just want to point out is for the next hundred days, when it comes to CSAT, take all the previous year's prelims questions and make sure for the first one hour, okay. Time at one hour, are you able to get 20 mathematics questions? Right. Do this practice first. Right. It will give you the confidence. Oh, yes, for UPSC standard question paper within the one hour, I am actually able to get 20 questions. Right. Once you get that confidence, that itself will help you in the day of the examination. Okay. So let it be UPSC paper or any coaching center paper, whatever it is, you just make sure that one hour, 20 questions. So to get the 20 questions, you should actually be able to move fast over the difficult questions as well. Right. So all that, when you do it, you will be very, very feeling much confident then. So that can be the exercise. So similarly, for every area, for every topic, if you see, there would be a difficult question. At the same time, there will always, so I, this is a difficult question. Whereas these are very, very simple questions. It's so simple. X and Y start running. Then they go 
X turns right, goes for 60 meters. Y turns left, goes for 40. Then both of them turn, go for 50. What is the distance between the two points, 100 meters? Six turns, seven turns, low equations, right? You have such kind of questions also. Just make sure you don't end up leaving out these questions. Because last year's top students' experience was after the exam, they came and told me, sir, there were so many simple questions, which I, which I did not even attend. Because I was only focusing on, you know, I, I was going in an alpha in a order. Okay, I was going in order thinking I have to solve one and then only I have to go next. Your mind will start pressurizing you to not go to the next question without solving it because you have already left some seven, eight questions before. Now you will start feeling the pressure because you left seven questions. The eighth question, whatever happens, you have to solve. Whatever happens, 10 minutes also you will spend for just two marks of work. But your mind will trick you to doing that. Okay, so that's why develop the ability where you feel that after, after the first hour, you have to move to reading comprehension. So by the time you finish the first hour, you already have 50 marks in your hand, right? So train yourself like that. Maybe at least weekly once you solve one full CSAT paper so that in the next 10 weeks or 12 weeks, okay, you have, so, you have solved so many tests where in the first one hour you have solved 50 marks. You have got assuredly 50 marks, right? Next one hour, patiently you think about reading comprehension. You will definitely get many questions, right? Once you're done with reading comprehension, then once again come to max and now take all the difficult questions and start solving. Okay. Because reading comprehension is not something that you should do when your mind is in, under pressure. Okay. You'll, you will not be able to see things clearly. Okay. And then what happens is you make the wrong choices there. You will not even realize you're making wrong choice. Whereas in mathematics questions, you will not make wrong choice because you're not even getting the answer right. So even when you work under pressure, you will not, in mathematics question, and you're working under pressure, you will not go simply and share the wrong answer. Because you would not even have got any answer in the first place. But reading comprehension, there is a great possibility to always go for the wrong, wrong option when your mind is not thinking clear. Make sure after the first hour, you have to switch over to reading comprehension. Right? So train yourself in the next 100 days. Weekly one full test. Right? Like that ratios everywhere. Everywhere you have easy questions. Spot them. Spot them. Ace them. Other questions, forget. Don't even worry a little bit also. Okay? Very, very simple. A, B, C by 3 is equal to 40. Average weight of B plus D plus E by 3 is 42. Now, what is the weight of A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F, whereas F is equal to B. So, instead of F, you have to put it as B, whereas B plus D plus E is 42, A plus B plus C is 40. So, you actually get the answer right. You don't even have to use a pen for these kind of questions. Okay, you only need to think there, right? So, all these are simple, very, very simple. P and Q, okay. It might appear as if it's a difficult, difficult question. Uh, what is it? P, Q, and all that. You know the number property. Okay. P and Q are two digit numbers. Okay. And Q be the number consisting of same digits written in reverse. Okay. And when you multiply those numbers, you end up getting zero. Right? You have to multiply any number by five, only then you get zero. Right? So it means that one number it should be five. There is only one option which has five in it. You don't even have to do any maths, right? So it's easy. That's what I'm trying to point out to you. Okay, C sat is easy. At least getting 50 marks in mathematics is actually very, very easy. You should not be self-defeating and push yourself out of these 50 questions on it. All right. Yeah. So with respect to difficult questions, then what can you do? So does it mean that you can simply uh, only focus on the strong areas again and again? Instead of trying to strengthen yourself, you can strengthen yourself. Okay. For example, when you keep doing CSAT solving, in the first one hour, you get 20, 25 questions right. Whatever is left out after the test is over, now you take those areas. You find out which were the questions that you almost came close and you still were not able to just break it. And there could be some questions which you did not even, you could not even imagine how to break it and simplify it further. Okay, so there are some areas which you will never be able to develop that thinking, even if you start preparing now also. So don't worry about those areas. But those areas where you had a slight spark and you just did not know one property because of which the problem suddenly came and got stuck in the middle. You know, those areas try to strengthen more. Okay, selectively focus areas so that another five questions in the exam might turn out to be right. Okay, because don't just throw, don't just fire everywhere now okay that's the time is done for that now be more selectively focused choose some five six areas 
only strengthen those areas again and again and again. Hope that two or three or four questions will be helpful for you in the exam from those areas. Okay. So easy areas, go for it. So difficult areas, try to focus only one type of area, focus, sit, work for one week. Maybe in 10 weeks, you can get yourself strengthened to 10 different areas at the maximum and hope for the best in the examination. Okay. But I, I, I want you to have the confidence that even without strengthening yourself in those difficult areas, still you will be able to clear TSAT. So build that confidence. That is more important. And to build that confidence only, I say, one hour, 20 questions. Are you able to get that? Right. Get into that mode of practice. Okay. Yeah. So when you give CSAT tests, make sure the discipline is built in. Okay. You should not spend more than two, three, two or three minutes per question. Even though it may, you may feel that you are almost near the solution, still just stop it and go to the next question. That's how you slowly build the discipline. Okay. And yes, focus on both RC and quantitative. So divide one hour, one hour equally, and then see how it works. It will, you will be doing it much better. Okay. All right. So coming to general studies. So, Predominantly, the analysis is based on previous year's questions, but I also taken the year before that, 2021 and 2022 prelims, an analysis of that will give us a direction on how to prepare for every subject in the upcoming 100 days. Okay. So from the last two years, continuously, I find it is history from where the bulk of the questions are asked. The majority questions in both the years are from history. Last year, it was 16. The previous year, it was 17. Okay. Right, 17 and so 16 and 17, highest. Then comes economy last year, 15, but the previous year it was polity with 15 questions. So you find obviously, so it's the these four subjects, okay, which from where bulk of the questions, the most of the questions are asked, out of which history has some really good weightage, around 17 questions. Have you seen the questions of history last year? Are they there in your NCRTs? They are not there, right? They are all there in optional syllabus books. Okay. So, the expectation is, even those who end up scoring clearing prelims, those students who I have seen last year clear prelims and all, even their performance in history is only to score maximum 50% of marks in history-related questions. So, of total of 16 mark questions, even if you can get... 15 marks, okay, 15 to 17 marks. If you're able to get, you're actually on the safer side. You're among those who are going to clear this exam. Okay, so you prepare, you have a look at the question paper and find out what are those areas which actually I can actually solve and get 15 marks. Okay, so we will see what, why, why do I say so? In fact, I would say among all these subjects, my optional subject was history. Despite that, when I look at these questions, I don't think I could have got more than 50 percentage of the Right? Because the kind of facts that are asked are very, 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 what do I say? Unheard of facts. You normally do not come across them in your normal course of preparation. Because there are so many names that are asked. Okay. And history is such so vast. You only have certain books which we study, which is after all the tip of the iceberg of history. Right? There is so much which we, we do not even come across. That's why whenever there are extremely factual questions in history in your examination, better you leave it. Most probably you'll go wrong in those questions. Especially it is from ancient and medieval India. At least modern, there's a possibility that you somewhere or the other you may have heard about it. Because you read two, three books for modern India, NCRTs, insert, you also read Spectrum also. Some of you would also read Bipin Chandra's Struggle for Independence also. So, from uh, wide reading, at least from three, four books, definitely the factual base of modern India for everybody would be better off compared to ancient and medieval. Right? So, be cognizant that there is a weakness that everybody will have with the ancient medieval, you will also have it. So, for example, yeah, the different types of questions that history from history are, questions are asked for based on map as well. Okay, names and personality based. Have you understood the society of that, that particular period? Events, causes and consequences. It's these which primarily are focused year after year. Right. So, these are all the names. Yoga, Vashishta, okay, Arya Deva, Nannuka, Right? You would not even have heard about it. Okay. Not possible. <laughs> okay. So don't worry about it. And the more ch challenging is when this is asked. 
how many pairs are correctly matched one pair two pair that's where the difficult part lies okay even at least if they would have given one two three one and two maybe we can play around with the options eliminate two then take go for it but here most knowledge going to go wrong so be aware this is not the area which you should actually attend okay so you should actually practice this in your test itself in your test itself when you take random blind attempts and if it goes right if you feel happy about it you will not learn about it you will not learn about your weakness you will not learn from the mistakes so that's why don't think that you should maximum get how many as much marks as possible in these tests that you write these tests are a learning about your own personality right so try avoiding these kind of questions even in starting from your test series itself okay don't simply take a blind attempt thinking that okay everything seems good all pairs all four pairs upsc it will not work okay so resist this is those urge you see this is how map based questions are asked right we all know about ajanta elora paintings which era the paintings are what is the imagery that is depicted what colors are used pigmentation themes depicted all that is fine but look at upsc's way of asking what is that valley that is located you see that's how geography is linked with history similarly in 2021 there was a question asked five different empires were given and the question that were asked was or that was asked was which of these empires are empires of north india right guptas of magadh yadavas of devagiri okay pushyabutis of taneshwar right and many options were given you can actually when you prime face when you look at the question it appears to be oh my god i have not even heard of these dy dynasties who are they okay i only know about mauryas i know guptas not guptas of magadh suddenly you hear about pushyabutis of taneshwar a common non history option student might find it to be a bit challenging but the question is actually not so challenging if only you knew that magadh is it's in north north india if only you know devagiri it's not in north india when you look at other options from the options you'll be able to eliminate but you need to actually know this fact that devagiri is somewhere in central india it's not in north india but for that when you came across devagiri in your history books immediately you should actually look at that ncert maps okay where is devagiri you know that curiosity should actually take you to that map right so from now onwards when you start revising your history make sure you simply don't read the text alone also refer the places in the map at least get a glimpse spatial orientation must be there okay upsc has asked such uh, yeah. it's focusing on these kind of questions only last year i mean in 2021 there was another question which of the following are ports of uh, british and british okay surat was one next was trichinopoly third was chikka coal okay it was given okay do you know what is trichinopoly north indians do you know what is it you will not know south indians what is it trichy is it a port it's not a port it's interior right so you we will be able to eliminate it but what about chikakul chikakul is the old name of shrikakulam okay in british records it is written as chikakul okay and upsc asks you like that right so but i think that question can be solved only with the knowledge of trichinopoly you can the options are given like that okay so that's why i say focus on map okay so tomorrow it need not be trichinopoly trichinopoly it could be baranpur okay then south indians might not know where is baranpur okay so uh, that's why make this so you can learn from the way of upsc's questions like you see dauli we read about ashoka's inscriptions and all but how many of us would have taken the care to immediately look at the map and find out in which state it is located right of course history option students do that but what about general studies students why don't you do it as well because upsc is expecting you to have an idea about it right you don't need to have a knowledge about all the inscriptions and where they are located but at least the major ones you should okay upsc is testing you for that don't simply be conventional okay don't go on in the conventional mindset that uh, only ncert is i revise 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 tests i'll give as many number of tests i'll go and fail. no learn from this this gives you more indicate better indication of the how to proceed for so these type of questions i would say i would not even attempt these questions at all very because because of the, it is this which is the problem okay there's a high probability of going wrong i better leave it very factual most probably i would not even have heard about it leave it no idea okay but you can think about it 
this probably i would have got it right okay among this this is the more manageable one which is actually possible at your end you have your Ash ashoka's inscriptions but these and all you would not even have heard who these people are in ncrt's i don't think these names are even given okay all dynasties might not be given okay so that's why i say in history even if you get 40% questions right 40% of the marks of history if you get it right you are actually on the safe side because you still have polity economy where you'll be able to get 80 90 percentage questions right okay so start focusing you build build in the skill build in the skill of knowing what i should actually study from now onwards okay don't simply take the book and read it again don't take your class notes and read all the class notes again it's all not going to work at all when i come to geography you'll understand from all your ncrt's there were only i think two questions were asked nothing more than that okay all other questions in geography and all it is all based upon map most questions are only based upon rivers reservoirs which are located in and around the rivers okay very very physical map based questions have been asked then it makes the entire reading of ncrt is redundant of course reading ncrt is necessary to gain the basic idea of what is a river and all but with the basic ideas alone you will not be able to go any further in the upcoming years because that's the direction UPSC is hinting to the aspirants, right? You will get to know more when I discuss about geography. So, these are all easy questions, okay? From modern India, I find pretty much the questions are easy. Okay, they are not so difficult as such. Okay, these are all directly there in your Vipan Chandra, okay, uh, Gadar Party. When you read the chapter, uh, you have all the names which is, which is there. These are all very simple. Modern India pretty much becomes simple. The problem is only in uh, ancient and medieval. Okay, so try to leave it if if you if you think that it's risky. Right. So the plan is focus on places, personalities, events, map location in modern India alone, because you cannot actually focus on personalities, names, events in ancient and medieval. There is just so many, so many, so many writers have been there in history. You cannot go and read each about each of them. But modern India is more possible okay you know settlements of various co colonizers where have they settled what were the primary trading outposts primary factory locations important wars where have they happened correct so like that it's much more easier to read about personalities places events for modern india but not so possible for ancient Middle India, right so complete and revise ncrt such standard books of modern india be really good yes for ancient and medieval, what you can do is just keep facing questions. Keep facing questions so that you understand there is a particular type of poetry which actually exists. At least have some hearsay knowledge of what that is actually about. Because it is, from now onwards, it is not possible for you to directly go to NCRTs and then start getting to the depth of each and everything. Right? For purpose of getting the broadest ex exposure in the shortest span of time, focus for ancient and medieval from whatever tests you give. Keep giving many tests, find out answers for those questions. At least with that learning, now go to the examination. Because it doesn't make economical sense to master ancient and medieval four NCRTs from now onwards. Okay, if you have already mastered it, fine, go and revise it. But even there, then there will be a lot of questions which will be asked outside these standard books. So that's why face questions that will be much more worthwhile in preparing for ancient and medieval. Yes, always keep. I mean, I'm not saying a different map as such. Even in the NCRTs, whatever map is there, right? There will be hundreds of maps in NCRTs, in history NCRTs. Look at the map. Okay. Look at the map. Look at uh, look into the boxes, the small small boxes that are given in your NCRTs, new NCRTs, right? Those are interesting areas from where UPSC is fond of asking questions. Okay. Even Batuta, when he had come to India, what was his, his accounts? That will be given in a small box. But that's where the primary source of history lies. So no wonder UPC is interested to ask questions from those boxes, right? Boxes at the end of the chapter, there are activities, right? So do all that, that will all sharpen your understanding and skills for problems. This is more very, very important. Don't be tempted to attend unnecessary factual questions. You will most probably not know about it. So if you don't know it, then still you're attending. It's a wrong mindset, isn't it? Just the temptation there. Why? Because after choosing all the questions, now you find that, oh my God, I have only attended 45 questions. So this, how will I clear? So now let me take a random attempt. No. Even if you fail in this exam, you should learn something out of the failure. 
Okay, so uh, don't do things which will not teach you anything. Te uh, you because you already know that you should not choose random things. Okay, so at least when it comes to history, okay, I, I, I'll maybe I'll be a little bit different in science and tech. I'll be slightly diff diff different in saying an opinion when it comes to environment because environment just from the name that is given, you'll be able to make a lot of guesswork. Okay, bio rock, you may not have heard about it. But still, when you look at the options, there will be only one option which is actually close to biology and rock. Okay, from that, still you can make something out of it. But history, okay, who is Nannuka, Chandela, can you make a guess? You cannot make a guess. You either know it or you don't know it. It's a fact. Right. So, try to do this. Get at least 50% marks in history. Nothing more is expected. Okay. Even when you give your tests, aim for this. Am I able to cross this 50% threshold? Now? Right. Quality, I can divide the 12 questions asked this year in quality. Last year it was 15, this year it was 12. So for online students who have doubt, I'll address your queries at the end. Okay. Please raise your hands, keep note down your doubts and at the end we can have a discussion on your queries. So, quality, 12 questions asked this year. 15 asked last year. Last year's question paper was a bit tricky than this year's paper. This year's paper, quality questions is much simple. Okay, out of uh, 12 questions, I would say 10 questions are easily manageable only from NCRT and Lakshmi. Okay, one question I can say it is outside your standard framework itself. You cannot do anything about it. One maybe from outside your standard textbooks, but still you can do something and manage. Right. So I'll leave it all. Uh, the NCRT and Lakshmikant questions, 10 questions, very simple. So I don't need to say anything more on that. I would say it is actually possible to get all these questions, right? So questions that are outside your standard textbook. This is from rules of procedure. Okay. This is a question from rules of procedure. This is about with reference to deputy speaker of Lok Sabha, consider the following statements. See, what is the difference between this? I have marked some questions that's outside standard textbook. This is outside standard framework. Outside standard textbook is, you can still get it right. Standard framework itself is, you cannot get it right at all. So better you leave it, right? So this is just outside your standard textbook. But you know who's a speaker, you know deputy speaker, you know whether deputy speaker's post is mandatory or not, you know parliamentary procedures regarding motions and everything. With all that, you can actually get this answer, right? You don't need, really need to know the exact provision regarding deputy speaker as how it is given in rules of procedure. You don't need to know that. But with a mixture of all the ideas surrounding parliament, you can get this answer, right? You have to just get it right by knowing that speaker will not move any motion in the Lok Sabha. Speaker is a person who will accept a motion that is being moved. There is no way why speaker should move a motion. If you can know that logic, who moves a motion and the process of how a motion is admitted, how it is discussed, how it is adopted, you will understand speaker has no role in introducing any motions. With that, you can actually eliminate this option and you will end up getting the right answer. Okay, that mandatory provision, you will be able to eliminate it. Two is not there. So, it should be one and three as the answer. Okay, like that. So, this is an answer which you can get right, but it is also okay to not even attempt this also. But it is definitely not okay if you did not get all these questions right. Because this is where almost everybody is going to clear prelims, will get all these kind of questions right. So, you should not fall behind where everybody is able to march ahead. But this is an area where maybe out of two questions, some people may get one and one right. So you can even afford to not attempt this at all. Okay, if you want to play it very safe, you are good in other areas, even leave, leave it unattempted. But questions outside standard framework, you cannot actually do anything about it. Right? Because you would not even have heard about all these things. It's okay. Nobody would know it. Right. Even this is the last year's questions that is outside standard framework. The previous year, there was a question on Gopal Swami Iyengar committee had recommended for a separate ministry for personnel. You know, such kind of questions were asked. We would not even have heard what is that committee. But it's okay. You can leave it and go away. Those are questions that are outside standard framework. So, your priority in the upcoming days when it comes to polity, right? Make sure whatever test you give, Okay, see, from now onwards, you're going to give 50 questions every day. Okay, whether you join a test series or you take free question papers, keep solving it, whatever you do, you must have 50 question practice every single. So, that in the next 100 days, you will solve at least 5,000 questions. 
right so when you do all that make sure whenever you solve polity questions you should gradually progress and one day the day before your exam you should come to a point where all polity questions from ncrt and lakshmikanth you get everything correct okay that is the that is your only goal your goal is not to strengthen here this will automatically come up when this happens there is a skill that will build slowly which will help you in this area but this not are in our hands and not should, should not be in our concern as well. okay so focus on solving questions make lot of mistakes because polity is a subject where it's completely memory oriented memory in the sense recollection based okay it's very easy to understand it if i teach you how president is removed you'll understand it but will you be able to remember it two days later that's the query question so make sure remembrance happens okay you are able to bring it you are able to fetch your stored memory and get the options right so revision constant revisions lakshmikant is the book which should become soiled okay you should make it brownish in color before you give your prelims what i mean is so many revisions have happened okay so if you do that you will automatically get all the standard questions right improve accuracy so uh, when it comes when it comes to polity uh, yeah accuracy has to be improved which are the taxes that are not a part of divisible pool of resources four options can be given you should be very very specific about knowing everything okay what are the four different definitions of money bill upsc has asked it in 2019 prelims the question was which is the correct definition of money bill exactly article 110 the four clauses were put in there do you know it correctly or not you know slight difference was made so precision matters a lot when it comes to polity and the precision comes when you make a lot of mistakes so start making a lot of mistakes so which means start attending at least 50 questions every day okay when you attend 50 questions no when you make a mistake please don't stop it with the answer key alone don't think that i make a mistake i look at the answer key oh this is the answer for it that's not preparation when you make a mistake go to that part in the textbook and read the entire part okay at least two three pages in and around that you should be reading it not simply knowing the one word answer for this that's a waste of time but in and around surrounding that what all is there from there some question will come in prelims because you have made a mistake and now you went and started learning it you had a search a reason why you now learn because in classroom you don't make a mistake it's just delivery there is no reason for you to learn but when you make a mistake now you are in seeking mode you search search you are searching for an answer that answer will permanently it will remain okay so build that need that need comes only by solving questions and making mistakes all right forget about this don't waste your time reading government schemes government bodies not a single question is asked in the last 3 years okay because upsc is reserving it for mains not for prelims okay new bodies uh, any law what is amendment that has happened not at all asked upsc is instead more focused on do you actually understand the concept of equality even better or not okay do you understand what is the best safeguard for a citizen's liberty committed judiciary will be an option given which is actually a wrong option right so upsc has very wonderful ways of testing so that's why build your conceptual base with polity intact build it strong and polity is one area which is very confined from article 1 to article 440 there is a boundary so it means that you can be more certain about and more predictable about the questions that will be asked unlike history that's why you have to compensate for the loss that you are going to have in history by having a stellar performance in polity okay and that is very easy because from the past tra track record you can see 90% questions are only from these areas 80 to 90% at least if you get it all right you get good score here so focus do this i am sure you will do well in polity okay moving on science and tech what should you be doing for science and tech different kinds of questions are asked some are merely awareness based some get into the depths of your science knowledge okay and uh, some with some deduction and common sense you can actually get it right okay so these are core science concepts why water water is universal solvent and all such questions what should be done 
to face all science based questions perfectly right start focusing on your sixth standard ncrt this is the only subject for which i would suggest you you start from sixth standard and work your way up to 10th there are so much in sixth and seventh ncrts which you may actually not know about when it comes to science right for history geography and all i would say that you can only stick to the uh, higher class textbooks but uh, when it comes to science start from six there is so much about fractional distillation that you will find in seventh standard textbook which you may not actually have an idea of. right basic properties of liquids in sixth standard book you will have it what is capillarity you will have it there okay so it's a very good time to take your lower books start study them and take ncrt tests for science solve it fast so that your ncrt knowledge for science is really built good at least 30% of the questions every year in science and tech will belong to this fundamental science category okay this is all regarding awareness recent days are you hearing anything in the recent days in and around you regarding science this should have been taken care by now with your newspaper reading habit even otherwise it is for this area your compilations of any academy will be useful okay the compilations will not will, will not be able to teach you these they cannot teach you basic science but they can teach you awareness okay a missile testing has happened the missile can go and strike a extra stellar object right so what is that everything described and upsc will only ask you what is fractional orbital bombardment system and the four options are so different that you will be able to get the answer right even if you would have just been exposed to that word so the point is for facing the questions in science and tech which tests your awareness about have you heard of this term see upsc is not going to go too deep into quantum computing but upsc is only aware have you heard of this term somewhere yes anybody who would have heard about quantum computing would have known about that this is a term that we have come across in the context of quantum computing right so it's uh, such a superficial level awareness parts which gets tested so the expectation ideal expectation is your strength with current affairs as you have learned from hindu paper and lot of browsing but uh, now it's time so you cannot actually go and read the hindu paper again take the compilations okay just take the science and tech parts read them this part you can manage with compilations okay <clears throat> and these are questions which i don't think you will you will not read about these definitely in your ncrts and these are not something you would have heard about led bulbs everybody sees led bulbs but you would not have known whether it produces 360 degree light or not right these are the questions where and please in science and tech no uh, don't just simply go for an option that has all the above okay th that's a very wrong way of going for it because you feel that uh, everything looks nice <laughs> okay <laughs> but it need not mean that it will be the right answer for that question <laughs> okay there is no link between solar flares and forest fires okay but if you go for it thinking that everything seems to be heat solar and all that correct upsc may trick you into doing all that and here also 1 2 3 is wrong answer because led lamps produce not 360 degrees only 180 degrees one the either it is 3 or 2 okay and a street light sodium lamps have longer life span than led no way yes so when you look at this question you may not know this option first you will only know this option perfectly right right in you know our homes we change the mercury um, vapor lamp incandescent bulbs often vapor lamps are changed often but led long life right so this is definitely something that is wrong eliminate two we have three only and one and three now there is a difficulty here okay so use some logic even if you are able to eliminate this immediately you should know that oh one two three is not the correct answer okay but without even thinking like that students tend to feel okay science and tech uh i am a history student so i have been told that if science and tech go for a, all the options most probably they are all correct otherwise why would upsc give it no upsc would give it to test you also <laughs> right there are so many reasons why upsc would give you all you all these questions so science and tech what should be your approach your approach is build awareness from compilations in the next 100 days revise fu fundamentals of science from ncrts by solving ncrt question uh, question papers with that 60% questions you will become familiar with in science 
there will always be 30 to 40 percent questions which will be of this nature where independent individual skill will come into play in getting these questions right because this is all to do with your browsing ability your curiosity right these are curiosity based so i cannot give a solution to tackle these questions as such if you are interested normally you would automatically be searching for answers for these things already in your life okay but still for science if this is the ratio of questions you can get it you are actually on the very very safer side but even if not 70 to 80 percent i am very sure by awareness by good fundamentals of science you can get 60 percent of the questions right okay and make sure you are careful in handling these type of questions where you are not aware of in science and all don't think you can make a guesswork in a sense um, how can telephone wires lead to emission of magnetite particles no way okay you cannot think like that there could be a research paper which would have been done scientists would have found that telephone cables are emitting small iron particles magnetite dust is being emitted this was a question asked in 2021 prelims which of the following results in emission of magnetite dust okay car brake shoes engine cylinder piston third is telephone cables fourth is microwave oven okay you cannot think mag uh, magnetite dust iron iron dust iron dust how does it come brake shoe possibly yes it can happen engine cylinder friction is there it can happen telephone cable no way it is not going to happen but actually it happens okay so scientists have found it out right so that's why don't make guesses understand you only have a very limited knowledge about the world right people are delving so deep into understanding nature correct so your no learn your understanding about the nature is very limited right so be very careful when you make guesswork in science especially with respect to applications you may not actually have an idea about it okay, you cannot you you may not, you, you may think that uh, a particular chemical is poisonous okay it, it may have the word cyanide in it you may immediately assume that it is a poisonous but it, one of the application could be lipsticks okay you never know right so never assume when it comes to science understand our learning is limited it is better to leave it unattempted than making a complete blunder and don't think that okay i have eliminated two options here it is either three only or one and three um, sodium lamps produce light at 360 degrees but it is not so in the case of led lamps no 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 when i switch on led lamps in every room light is all lit that should not be correct. no don't don't uh, attribute false assumptions about things that you don't know okay so yeah awareness based questions awareness based areas focus on the compilations usually i always suggest to not to read compilations not to read compilations that is a formula in the initial days of your preparation not in the final days of your preparation if i would have told in the first day itself start reading compilations you would not read hindu paper at all reading comprehension will not develop sri skills will not develop answer writing will not develop but now i would not ask you go and read hindu paper from beginning okay now is the time to consolidate things for consolidation compilations are good they bring into your hand every information that has some significance in the past so it saves a lot of time so for science and tech especially for those awareness based questions you can go for compilations and this is very important when it comes to science and tech do not leave a single ncrt unprepared okay start from class 6 till class 10th at least 11th 12th leave it for time being <laughs> at least this yes. 11th 12th is where you have properties of light and all that concave convex which can also be asked in upsc right in which of the lenses is a virtual image formed is it concave or convex no such kind of questions are also a possibility you can you can never say it might not be asked right develop develop this all all you need to do is just browse so don't go blindly for all the above options try to get at least 60 not lower than that check you you use these benchmarks and check yourself in your tests are you able to get 60% in your test that you give in science are you able to get 80 to 90% in quality questions in your, in your test keep that as a benchmark and keep testing yourself current affairs okay uh, location and map based then there are current affairs that are based on organizations and bodies right a lot of such kind of questions are asked so my expectation is uh it's a very interesting area to prepare if you have been preparing sincerely if you are interested to read the world news page right if you are generally interested to know about the world you know 
then it's an interesting area you can score good marks but if you have been see for those who are not reading hindu paper properly there is a slim chance in prelims okay but try to compensate for that from compilations if it is possible uh, the assumption is the assumption why this discussion happens is assuming that you are all serious as and who are who is a serious aspirant who has been reading hindu paper for the last one year at least since you started your preparation okay so with that assumption only i am saying all these places which were asked it these are asked from news that have happened in the last year none of these places are strange places that upsc has asked. from whatever has happened somewhere in the news upsc has taken that and asked as a question okay so you look at this question bidi bidi is a large refugee settlement in northwestern kenya some people who fled from south sudan civil war live in bidi bidi some people who fled from civil war in somalia live in dada refugee complex in kenya you cannot learn it anywhere correct the only way you could have come across it is when it happened and you had spotted it <laughs> otherwise there is no way you will learn it all correct and do you think a compilation even if this details are given you will remember the bidi 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 okay kenya dada kenya will you be able to remember all that you will not even focus on so that's why only if you are reading paper this part becomes comfortable for you okay so world news site and again even if you read world uh, this is actually very easy this is a very prominent issue since my days of preparation senkaku daioyu islands okay these are islands between china and japan where there is always a maritime dispute okay such a simple question is there so you can actually get it right you can get this right catalonia is not in italy anatolia is in turkey okay i'm not sure about other areas but uh, i think if i was preparing i would have come across these areas in the newspaper possible i believe so it should definitely not be all four pairs it should definitely be one pair okay so whether it's maybe i'm not sure cabo delgado looks like an italian name okay but catalonia i'm sure it is in spain it is not in italy okay so you can even that's also a skill right deductions based on the sounds that you know right and how do you know those sounds because you would have studied those kind of places somewhere in the internet italian places have these sounding names you know so such kind of some awareness must be here to work this is very very easy everybody knew this is a question that is predictable why because usa withdrew from afghanistan so everybody would have prepared afghanistan where is it what are the all the neighboring countries such a predictable question okay so i believe definitely three questions are possible to get it right out of the five questions that are asked from world map based areas right and if you are even more serious if you have been reading newspaper i believe even you could have got this question also right i think four or leave four will be even more conservative we'll get three questions right okay even with that kind of a performance okay and this is all regarding uh, international organizations okay from international organizations the climate groups international on profit organization that drives climate change by bringing large networks and runs them i would say this is a uh, not so easy question to attend you need to be very specifically aware of this only then you'll be able to attend but most people would be aware of these two right i'm sure your international organization class would have addressed the india which is a member of which of these bodies right so seo we are a member missile technology control regime yes we have, we have been admitted right i'm not sure about asian infrastructure are we uh, sure okay then probably 1 2 3 will be the answer so if i'm sincerely preparing for this exam i'm sure i'll get these two questions right but uh, these two are quite uh, only if you would have read it in the newspaper and if you remember it or what you have read from the compilation if you are able to remember these two you can get it right So still, from various bodies and organizations, I believe at least fifty percent strike rate is a possibility. Okay, actually, if you see, if I believe fifty percent is a strike rate here, basically you end up getting fifty percent as a minimum mark in your prelims, isn't it? Right, and then there are quality, economy, which is going to pull your marks even more than that. So why should anybody fail in prelims then? Okay, it should not happen then. Correct. <laughs> it's it's easy only. You have to just. be aware of uh, areas where you have to focus and get them right okay so international affairs you see 
IO, international organizations, world map, and even for mains, for GS paper too, you have international relations and bilateral. For all that, compilations are really a very useful tool for your preparation. Okay. Even for your mains also, this is one area where compilations will be useful for you. So, for uh, current affairs, compilations regarding world map, international organizations and bodies will be very useful in preparing. Okay. Because I'm sure in the compilations, also they'll give you maps and all, right? They'll give you colorful map, water bodies next to them. Everything will be given. What background of that place, right? So everything that is required about a place in news, you will find it in compilations. So this is a go-to place for current affairs part, especially with respect to world news part. Okay. Yes. Spatial orientation of different countries. See the... When when, uh, when when something comes in the news, no, you should immediately see the Google map. Okay, how does it look like? Do you know where Kenya is located? Which part of Africa? Western, Eastern, Northern, Southern. Where is it located? Mid East. Correct. That is where it is located. Okay. So South Sudan and Kenya might be close to each other. You know, with that kind of logic also, you can go and get the answer. You can try to find it out. Okay, so that's why whenever there is a world news related article that you come across, immediately search for the map and find out its spatial orientation. Okay, your mind should actually have where is Bolivia, where is Colombia, okay, where is Argentina, that orientation must be there. Okay, which is a coastal country out of these, you know, that it's easy only. You just have to keep on looking at the map every day. It will be etched in your memory, right? So this is important. So yeah, even and uh, I would say world news is something that you can even start from now also, because if something was in news three four months back, it will also be in news now when it comes to world news. So even from today, when you Hindu paper, you come across the world news page, whatever place comes, start browse, look at the map, study the history, what are the important places, right? Just think from. A very interested perspective. One day you plan to visit those places. So, what are the important places here? You know, such something like that. Something that motivates you to know something more about the place. Right? From then, by searching like that, you'll come to understand what are the Italian sounding names, what are the Spanish sounding names, which might not actually be the correct options. You know, all those are uh, broad skills which you develop. Correct? And for international organization, I would say, see, these are all questions. Which even simple Wikipedia search, whatever you learn is more than sufficient to handle whether India is a member of these organizations, right? So any international organization, I, I feel the questions that are asked from international organizations, either they are very difficult that you would not even have come across them. Last year, the 2021 paper, there was a question asked about right to city, you know, right to city is under what convention of UN, you know, some kind of question we are asked, which is a very difficult question. I don't think anybody would have got that question right. But uh, with respect to India's membership in multiple forums and all, most probably people will get it, right? There was a question on organization for Turkic states. Which of the following countries are part of organization for Turkic states? That was a question asked why? Because last year, Turkey was trying to become the champion of the Islamic nations. It was asserting itself, right? So it is in that context that question would have probably been asked. Okay, so... World map rated areas is something that is actually more predictable. You can predict the type of questions itself which can actually be asked. Right? So don't leave it go wasted. That's a strong area for everybody. Now geography and environment. Okay. So these are the different areas from where questions have been asked. But it, that doesn't mean that from climatology, human geography questions will not be asked at all. No, it will be asked. But these are becoming more predictable these days. UPSC also knows that if you give four characteristics and ask students what climatic type it is, students are all getting it right. UPSC has found it out. Maybe that's why last year, now there's not even a single question on climatology. Okay. Last year, I would say the only core questions from geography which can be spotted from your textbooks, Go Cheng Leong, NCRTs, only these two questions, nothing else. Okay. And what are the other type of geography questions that are asked, that have been asked? All map-based questions. Namcha, Barwa, Nanda Devi, Nokrek, where are these wetlands? Okay. Grand Dakota Canyon is found by which of the following rivers? You see, four questions are asked simply from physical features, map-based physical features. So 
so your understanding of physical geography of india is should be very good leave the world map and world geography ideas one question we will leave it but india at least all rivers plateaus hills peaks passes okay ranges across different parts of india forests dams and reservoirs wildlife sanctuaries located tributaries distributaries of major river systems right physically you should be knowing everything about all these that is what upsc has been hinting in the last two years even the previous year there was a question on which of the following are east flowing rivers they did not give simple options ganga yamuna kaveri no they asked you brahmani baitrani and all those minor tributaries of godavari that was actually asked right so physical relief features topography is something that upsc is focusing with indian geography upsc is not so interested in testing you about equatorial climate doldrums okay upsc knows that students are nicely trained by coaching centers these days they are more more very much aware of that but whatever you how much can coaching centers teach about physical features there are always things that are left beyond that so that's why upsc wants to get into those areas right so take your physical map okay keep study studying that you can even use your india year book also for this purpose i think that would be a good way of studying india year book just for this physical relief and geographical features right take plateaus read all the plateaus now look at map browse where is this plateau what is the famous natural reserve that is located in anaro okay any important species is endemic to that region or not you know so such kind of search i believe now india year book once again becomes relevant It's relevant for a long time i was suggesting students don't read india year book it's a waste of time but for the last two years since more focus is now coming on geography physical features of india i would suggest you to at least go through it from the geographical point alone okay so these are i would say these are environment questions no what is the right way to prepare last year's questions clearly prove upsc is only has asked questions from current affairs regarding environment there was no question on and food web food chain primary producer secondary producer i'm not saying you should not read that you read that that is your basic foundation of reading but uh, upsc is hinting as a direction that it will ask you strange questions but they are not actually so strange goshi goshi is mentioned in news see that's why it's asked it's mentioned in news why is it mentioned okay yeah it is actually the most expensive mushroom 20000 rupees per kg okay so very expensive so that's why it figured in news it is providing livelihood to a lot of tribal groups it's naturally grown it's not artificially cultivated and all so it was in news similarly which of the following is not a bird yeah now we know this okay but on the day of exam if people would have followed newspaper or even from compilations also okay because compilations takes care of that this is a breed of fish golden mahsi which was actually brought out of iucn list okay its threat perception has now decreased so it was brought out of it okay how could you have known this it i don't think this and all will be there in a static textbook right because the most recommended environment book to read is shankar academy when you read that book it teaches you the foundations and all but it will not give you what is the recent updates but look at all these questions okay almost current affairs oriented okay these are all this is all current affairs only i don't know about this maybe this could be somewhat static also miyawaki everybody knows they would have all heard about it okay method of conservation uh, what is this mini forest in urban areas yeah correct right. this everybody knows but these are all because it was in news just go and search gushi hindu it will be a date january 2022 no wonder it was asked in june 2022 indian mahasir it should have been october 2021 something that was recently in the last one year so i pr pretty much believe that almost all your compilations would have had news on all these okay because it would have come in the news naturally it would have found its place in compilations right so take your environment compilation all the species fauna flora whatever is given in the compilations for the last 12 months read those details get aware of what it is okay and if you are interested go and browse more about it maybe simply the awareness of indian Mah golden mahasir would have get this answer right but knowing something more about gushi 
could have helped to differentiate easily between these two areas. Compilation might have given this. I'm not saying they would not have given. Even if they would have missed on something, if you would have done your own browsing for 10 minutes, something you would have gathered from the 10 minutes of browsing, which remains in your mind, just to get the answer. Right. So for environment is one subject, I would ask you to go and refer compilations. Okay. So science and tech, yes, you can refer compilations for the latest awareness on science and tech developments. Environment for latest species, birds, uh, recent initiatives taken by the government for regarding wildlife conservation. You know, so such kind of aspects you can read compilations. And this is an area related to agriculture crops, right? So just take and make a plan. Make sure you know about 10 major crops, not more than that. Right? Agriculture students will know all this. But non-agriculture students, we generally don't think about all this. Okay. So take 10 crops, rice, wheat, sugarcane, cotton. Know everything about that crop. Okay. Some 10 major food crops, 10 major cash crops. UPSC doesn't ask random crops and all. It asks about the major crop systems. The two questions are asked. And this is something that I think everybody can answer it. Right? Methane, which is which cultivation is known for its methane emissions? Rice. So two questions were asked only about rice, you see. Next was about the system of rice intensification. What are the problems associated with it? Options with it. That's why no more. If not, you get both right questions right. At least if you get one right unattempted, you still can manage a decent 50 to 70 percent marks in geography and environment. See, if only there were more questions asked from physical geography, more questions asked from geo geological phenomenon, more questions from climatology, I would say it is better to get 60 to 80 percent questions, right? But now that the questions are more map oriented, you know, all these features, geography optional students alone will be able to do it. Decently, they'll be able to handle it better. But others, if you are really interested in knowing about all these peaks and if you're aware of it, you can get it right. But otherwise, it is slightly tricky. That is why I'm re reducing the expectation to even if you get 50 to 70 percent of this question paper correct, you're still in a very, very safe position. Okay. Because uh, normally, UPSC aspirants will all prepare well for basic NCRTs, GC Leon. But not a question has been asked from those areas. Only two questions were asked. Right. So that is why try to go and prepare beyond that. Prepare from be map oriented, physical features oriented. Yeah, focus more on physical geography. Don't keep on reading the same areas which you are already strong. Okay, now go for newer areas. Okay, this is something that all of us might not be so strong. So read all this. And but don't forget to revise and become strong in climatology, basics, volcanism, earthquakes, all the basics you should be strong at. This year, there will definitely be a question on volcanism, plate tectonics, right? There is definitely going to be a question. It could be any type of a question. They may ask you about which are, even a match the following question could be asked. Different zones, volcanic zones will be given and which are the plates that are responsible for this volcanic tectonic plate tectonics. Four pairs may be given. They may ask you, are, are they correctly matched? So you should actually be more, more watchful about, more factually correct about seismicity okay so learn about that even better yes compilations for environment related current affairs focus on this you will at least get five questions in your exam correct if you are good at species and animals and all that okay and uh, try I'm not sure to what extent this can be successful because this year there was a question asked on pet pet bottles which we normally use in our life. But uh, do we know these facts? Polyethylene terephthalate, with reference to that, we use in our daily life. Consider the following statements, and four options are given. Okay. Difficult to attend. That's why this slide, you can actually avoid att attempting any of these two questions. Okay. Both. Sir? How? No, it can be stored. Can be. Even I thought it will not be stored, but it does get stored. So, so basically, see, when you have such kind of options, no, uh, I think it's an indication of some caution. If it was one, two, three, one and three, but here you see, it's all two, two pairs of options. 
and we are not very sure we may think why uh, it's all glass bottles beer bottles all liquor bottles we also assume right also there yes <laughs> so that's why because we, we uh, even i don't know what is the exact answer for this question okay so i'm saying that there will be these kind of questions where you will uh, unattempt will leave it unattempt no problem but we can now be more cautious last year upsc asked you about uh, a chemical called triclosan is something that we find in our daily lives uh, where is it found in our daily lives i think soaps toiletries i think right so i did not know until the question was asked okay so i'm pointing out to you if there is any way you can learn about the common chemicals carcinogens that find way into our body in, uh, in our daily lives even automobile fumes they may have some kind of carcinogens right some cyclic compounds benzene might be there in automobile exhaust which can be carcinogenic right so like that get to understand food preservatives take it as a category how food preservatives affect human lives learn about them you may come across some chemicals right which can be used in food, food preservatives cosmetics like that try to take some five six areas and find specific chemicals and their pro properties and their problems in our daily life who knows one among that might even be asked in your exam okay because every year up is asking at least one question from common compounds and chemicals that we experience in our daily lives okay fine we will move on last area is economy okay so last year uh, pretty much uh, good number of questions were asked around 15 questions from economy current affairs also mixed along with that okay so these are the different types of questions that i find asked in last year's question paper you see these are just current affairs whatever was there in current affairs it was asked okay so if you are so last year's current affairs have has nothing to do with this year but uh, i'm saying in the last 8 10 months something would have happened in paper on a daily basis if you are following properly you can handle such kind of questions then these are questions which are concept based okay what happens if the inflation is too high rbi is likely to buy government securities if government buys government securities it is actually pumping in more money into the system which is not going to happen correct right so this should be eliminated if rupee is depreciating rbi is like to sell dollars yes by selling dollars it is sucking in rupees making it more valuable yes if interest rates in usa european were to fall that is likely to introduce induce rbi to buy dollars yes if interest rates fall people will take away their money and go abroad so that lead to flight of capital right if that is the case rbi would like to stabilize it by buying dollars is it correct if interest rates in usa or europe were to fall it mean oh sorry were to fall okay 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 if were to fall not high if it is to fall down means uh, there is no better business there so they will bring dollars here okay if dollars are brought in here dollars are becoming more cheap dollars are already here so likely to induce rbi to buy dollars i, I don't think this is going to happen so is it going to happen okay i'm not very sure about it this is wrong isn't it helmet one okay you get the answer right okay maybe i'm not, i have to brush up my basics on economy but uh, i'm just saying these are concept based questions right simply from your fundamental understanding of concepts you can still get these kind of questions right so in economy you have questions which are current affairs based and then you have questions which are concept based then you have questions which are bodies basically okay bodies in news such kind of questions these are bodies organizations bank board bureau which of the following statements are correct okay you have some three options these are all prominently in news okay governor of rbi is the chairman of bank bureau is it correct no we have separate chairman vinodrai was the chairman of bank bureau so first statement should not be there 
you automatically get the answer right correct so uh, i have seen all through the years the questions that are asked from organizations and bodies which are in news upsc's questions are pretty much simple only they are not very difficult as such okay you will be able to manage just by reading paper properly so uh, i'm just saying that yeah okay and uh, the last two years upsc is also focusing on capital markets where is it yeah these kind of questions convertible bonds okay and then there were also some other questions also i'm not having it here they are focusing on capital markets okay so the business news page that you come across uh, these are instruments that are used by corporates to tap finance convertible bonds okay so they borrow money instead of repaying it back they borrow it in the form of issuing bonds correct right? so these are not things that we normally read in our economy books but the newspaper you get to come across all these right so when you next time when you read cap, uh, world sorry business news page focus on the uh, stock market related jargons terminologies okay that could also be useful for you and i think this you can actually go, get it from compilations compilations will give you a fair idea about all the latest financial instruments like optionally convertible bonds debentures okay uh, whatever has been introduced recently okay all that some basic awareness you will be able to get from compilations so read that and these are with respect to trends last year indian trends were not asked it was a uh, something about a foreign country vietnam how are things going in vietnam which sector is improving okay like that uh, upsc does focus on trends it usually focus on indian trends in the sense it gives you questions on manufacturing sector in the last 3 years gdp growth rate has been constantly on decline okay imports have been surpassing exports in the last two quarters of the last financial year you know so such kind of trend based questions are also asked so when you understand these type of questions what can you do to prepare for this first is to get these type of questions right okay acquiring new technology is a capital expenditure correct a technology is a capital expenditure debt financing is considered capital expenditure while equity financing is considered revenue expenditure both are actually considered as capital expenditure not revenue so first statement is right these are basic concepts only these are not very difficult questions to get these basic concepts right class notes revise them plus ncrts understand understand rbi buying government securities what is the consequence of that right so it's very simple so the basic concepts of economics has to be strengthened by from your class notes as well as from your ncrts i'm sure one third of the questions in economy you can handle with comfort when you do this these are all simply last years hindu paper articles nothing else so hindu newspaper reading if you have been doing it and uh, periodically you've been given economics tests also in the academy which should have also revised you plus compilations compilations of last 10 months just the economy page you take it and you read it i'm sure within 2 days the entire 10 months for economy will be covered there is nothing more to cover beyond 2 days right so you do this for you, so basically what it means is you have to make a plan like this on a daily basis what should you be doing on a weekly basis what you should do in the next one to third month what all you should have done by then if you have this plan then you will start ensuring on a particular day economy of 5 months has to be completed so am i completing it or not you know that milestone should be there or otherwise randomly just in a very unorganized manner if you keep on reading and revising you would not feel that you have consolidated things right so that's why have a plan so how do you prepare for economy what should be the plan even now start reading more on the terms that come in the business page that is a good way of revising it okay you would have learned about open market operations you would have learned about liquidity adjustment facility but tomorrow when rbi monetary policy now recently only it has uh, concluded i think what 25 basis points or 20 basis points what was the hike 25 basis point hike so i'm sure in that article there will be much more information given about inflation control and everything there was one question asked last year there was a direct question asked 
which of the i think uh, the question is not here last year's question was which of the following body is responsible for controlling inflation in india okay finance ministry so four options are given one of the options is rbi don't you think such an easy question yes you have easy questions as well so in economy the plan is to get at least 70 to 80% questions right if 15 questions are asked try to get at least 10 to 11 questions correct okay two questions let's assume you leave it another two questions you let's assume even go wrong with that ultimately it comes you should come to around 60 to 80 percent at least right to be on the safer side so how do you do it focus more on the terms because the terms that you come across in business page from now onwards will be one more round of revision and if if not revision if you are going to hear about it for the first time that's a good round of study that's going to happen okay basic connect basic class notes concepts and compilations to know about current affairs yes if time permits economic survey because right now you may be short of time economic survey is only to know, remember these trends as i tell you there have been years where something from economic survey has been directly asked in prelims as well but uh, even if you don't read economic survey for prelims it is a must when it comes to mains but now that you only have 100 days and you have so many areas to now cover that's why i say if time permits okay otherwise just forget it even with these things you can still get good score in indian economy right so a lot of questions question solving will build you this interlinkage which is necessary to solve these kind of questions you know that link between rbi money supply uh, money supply increasing what happens to rupee value if rupee value happens what happens to investment cycle you know i have to sit and patiently think and maybe i'll get it right but that connect is important because when you read your books you only learn it in a stand alone manner you learn about banking rbi's functions then you learn about foreign sector separately but how does rbi also involve in foreign sector activities influence the value of your currency right that kind of connect across the different topics that happens when you read the business page rbi has purchased dollars from the market okay so why why has it done it maybe to not to reduce inflation it is to influence currency value value of indian rupee it is for that purpose you know that connect is very important to get that connect right keep solving lot of questions keep reading compilations to know recent bodies organizations and any new uh, these kind of facilities that are in introduced okay that is the way to go about with economy all right so now what is the plan what can you do so now that you have understood what should be the expected score in different subjects right so i believe you are going to give all your best focus in getting almost all your polity questions right economy as well try to get maximize science and tech as well okay history don't stress too much over it make sure you are good in modern india make sure you get to know wide areas from ancient and medieval from your tests environment compilations have to be mastered with respect to environment okay and science and tech awareness based areas compilations okay this is all going to happen now what you can have from now onwards is a 100 day time table okay on for all 100 days you should have questions all 50 questions at least you take random 50 questions and solve it the randomness should introduce should be introduced okay take random 50 questions just solve it now find out the answers for that maybe solving it will take one hour feedback correction it correction and learning more about it will take another 2 to 3 hours right 3 to 4 hours is gone only on this test question preparation you still have another 10 hours with you right the 10 hours make sure you study you have you have to have 10 hours okay because your competitors are studying for 10 hours so the remaining 10 hours make sure you take one chapter parliament okay try to finish it as much as possible okay like that you should have at the end of a day you should feel that there was something tangible which i have completed today because when you attend classes and when you simply go and read you would not get that feeling of completion at all right you would have only learnt about one small area parliamentary privileges that itself would have taken 2 3 hours of your time now from now onwards you should make a plan and ensure that every day 
one important chapter, let's say it could be revolt of 1857 in history, or it could be banking in economy, or it could be volcanism in geography. One chapter per day must be completed, right? 50 questions per day plus one chapter per day. Okay. And in a week, you should ensure that uh, finish a theme. Ancient India itself should have been finished. Or complete a book, old NCRT. One book should be completed in a week. Okay. So you prepare a daily plan accordingly. If you are planning to finish your ancient India in the upcoming week, make sure in the first day you finish Indus Valley Civilization. Second day you finish the full Vedic period. Third day you finish Mahajanapadas. Like that, in seven days you'll be able to finish them, seven or eight different years. So one ancient India is now over. So that at the end of one week, you feel that, okay, one part of history is actually over. So by the end, end of a month, you feel history itself is actually over. You know, the minute you get that confidence that you have done, you will get your answers right. People fail in prelims because they keep on feeling that there is so much I have not covered. There is so much I have not covered. Cover it itself. Covering itself will give you some 60, 70 marks in your prelims. Right. So make this weekly plan. Similarly, have monthly plan so that three subjects, you are the strongest at three subjects. You choose what are those three subjects. Three areas strong. More than 70% strike rate you must have. You find out what those areas are. Correct? You have three months. Make a plan. One month, I should become an expert in one month such. The plan is flexible. You can make your own plans according. Okay. But if I were you, I would do this for sure. I would ensure book completion will be done every week. Okay, so that in 10 weeks, 10 books at least are completed. Okay. And full test. When you write full tests, observe. Observe for timing. Observe. Watch yourself. What kind of mistakes you are making. Are you making mistakes because of unawareness or are you making mistakes because of bias? Because you assume things to be right. You know, unawareness is an excusable mistake. But making mistakes on bias again and again and again is not... Usable. So find it out. Study yourself. It's to study yourself, you give tests. Right? And I told you initially itself, these are break it into one hour and one hour. Okay. One hour for max. Make sure you solve 20 questions. 50 marks, you are ensure. Remaining one hour, you only need to get another 20 more marks. It is actually easy to do that. Right? So do it and you will see the difference. This is how we can make a plan for the upcoming days. All right. So fine, I think we'll stop here. So any queries online, online students as well. Should we give mains test? Okay. Just 10 minutes. Okay. We'll finish it off. Should you give the mains test and Shankar? Uh, yes. It's good to give mains test, I would say. Okay. At least be in some touch with writing practice right now. Mains test doesn't mean that they are completely off your prelim syllabus. What is being given to you as prelims test? It is from those same areas questions are asked. So if you feel, uh, what do I say? I would say, If you have already analyzed previous years mains questions, then give the mains test. But without having any idea about how mains questions are asked in previous year UPSC, it is a waste of time to giving mains test. Because you'll be simply writing points and facts without knowing to address the demand of the question. I would leave it to you. If you would want some writing practice to remain intact, you can give mains tests. But uh, otherwise, I would say, uh, in fact, I always advise students. Before you give your prelims, you should have actually had an idea about mains areas of those prelims questions. Because UPSC asks very related areas in last year's mains will be asked as a next year's prelims questions. Because syllabus also overlaps. Somebody who prepares well for mains will have more knowledge than somebody who is preparing only for prelims. Okay. So that way, the ideal expectation is mains preparation is done before you even attend your prelims. But I understand for the freshness of your experience. You might, might not have the time to do that. So I would only leave it to you. If you feel motivated enough, you give main stress. 
or otherwise uh, you already have a 100 day plan to follow correct so just focus on that because writing a test for two and a half hours might exhaust you completely then one day is gone next day is also gone on last day's hangover <laughs> right so studying for 10 hours itself is a problem okay i would leave it to you then <laughs> Okay, uh, you have only covered modern India part and not covered ancient and medieval India that much. What should I do? Then just focus on tests. Okay, in tests, whatever ancient and medieval questions are asked, only focus on strengthening about those areas. Because you cannot go and start reading ancient and medieval from now onwards. Even if you read, hardly few questions are asked from direct textbooks. Uh, you will not be able to get them right. So just focus on tests and hope for the best. But understand, you should actually prepare it after your prelims is over. At least for the next prelims. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, whenever I gave my prelims, I can't throw my syllabus as well as monthly current affairs compilation. Uh, okay. You cannot, you can see, I know the test schedule will say, tell you 60 questions polity, 40 questions from June current affairs. Okay. I don't believe in uh, preparing current affairs month wise and then coming for the test. It should be prepared subject wise. Only when your mindset is fixed in a particular subject mindset, like you're reading economy. So entire search is around economy. Now you read a compilation for six months, whatever has happened in economy, it will go into your mind better. You simply take one month's compilation, starting from polity, economy, science, everything you read, it will not retain in your memory. So don't worry if you're not able to finish your compilation of that year month and if you are not able to come to the test, it doesn't matter much. Okay. Can you suggest some lists, schemes, organizations, ministries? Uh, don't worry about it. Okay. Even if I give a list, it will be useless. Okay. You cannot prepare like that. You cannot prepare this particular ministry. I'll prepare every scheme in that. Not going to work. Okay. So I even told you when I discussed about polity. UPSC is not asking those questions anymore. It is not. Last three years, not a single law is asked in the examination. A newly introduced bill in the parliament not asked. Okay, so maybe the benefit that accrues out of spending time on that might not be worth it. So just forget it. There are so much other static areas in polity to strengthen. Okay, focus on that instead. When to stop optional preparation? Need not stop. It can go till the day of your prelims. Okay, if it is optional, that is common to your problems, history, geography, political science, then don't stop, keep doing it. If it's mathematics, maybe you stop it by next month. Okay, so it is up to you. Okay, there are no solutions, answers for all these. Is reading Hindu newspaper enough for current affairs? If you have been reading for the last 10 months properly, that is more than sufficient. Okay. How to rest it in note making when we refer to monthly compilations eventually. Please don't make any notes for prelims. Waste of time. How many notes will you make? Just take a compilation. If you are reading a digital copy, just highlight the important ones. Just move on. You cannot take and make further notes out of it. Those themselves are notes. What are you making notes out of notes? <laughs> okay. So, if you read newspaper and if you make notes, that is different. Can you skip a class to cover 10 hours? Well, if you, yeah, you can do that. If you already know a subject, then why simply attend it again? Okay, so it, it's up to you. You can do it. But 10 hours of preparation every day must go on from now onwards. Is it fine to stop reading newspaper before 15 days of exam? Not fine, not fine. You should read newspaper the day before your exam as well. Okay, that is inexcusable. Maybe after your prelims, one or two days, you can take a break. After your mains, one week, you can take a break. Okay. That is the only break you can give for newspaper reading. Okay. You should be an aspirant who, even if I ask you to take a break, you should not take a break. Okay. That is essential. All right. So I think other questions are repetitions I have already addressed. So I wish you all the best. So have a good preparation for the upcoming 100 days. All right. And keep solving tests. Keep giving tests properly here. Those are your ways to test. Uh, find out your strengths and weaknesses. Okay. All right.
थैंक यू गुड इवनिंग ओके